Today, I will be introducing you to Robert Val Guthrie, one of the most famous black psychologists that surprisingly, you may never have heard of. Robert Val Guthrie was born in 1932 in Chicago, Illinois. A little known fact, he was a twin. His family quickly moved to segregated Kentucky where his dad had recently taken on a position at a local school as a principal. It was during these early years that Guthrie would become viscerally aware of segregation and its impacts on the lives of black children. He learned very early on that his experiences would be quite different from those of his white counterparts. It was also during these years that would shape his worldview and ultimately his career for focus, both clinically and in research. After graduating high school, Guthrie attended Florida A&M Florida University in 1948. At FAMU, he often lived hand to mouth, needing to eat at off campus segregated cafeterias, where fortunately he was looked after by the black cooks. He attributes his time at FAMU to sparking his interest in psychology as a professional field. His professor, Joseph Awkward, was one of the first opportunities that Guthrie had had to see a black academic expressing psychology, really honing in the idea that that could be a career path that it would be reasonable for a young black man to pursue. However, his studies were interrupted in 1950 when the Korean War broke out, at which point Guthrie signed up for the draft. He recounts that the military was the first place where he felt equal due to the integrationist policies that had been implemented over the preceding decades. Surprisingly enough, it was in the military that Guthrie first experienced an egalitarian approach to the treatment of men of all races. It was also while deployed that Guthrie would meet his wife while stationed at Samson Air Force Base. His wife, Elodia Sexton, was a nursing student from Guatemala. They would go on to get married and have one daughter and five sons together. Following the end of the Korean War in 1953, Guthrie would return to FAMU, where he would finish completing his bachelor's degree in psychology. He would then go on to attend the University of Kentucky for his master's degree, after which point he would return to the Air Force as a staff sergeant, where he would engage in a very illustrious career in the military. Guthrie would later recall, with a decided lack of nostalgia, that his time at the University of Kentucky was often fraught, given that he was the only black student in his master's program. I remember one of my white professors eyeing me as if I were an anthropological specimen and remarking, you are from one of our Negro schools. His fellow white students didn't offer much support either. He says, although one time he attended a football game after one of the white students begged him, when the band played My Old Kentucky Home, a song that at the time included favorable portrayals of slavery, Guthrie knew that he had to get his education and get the hell off campus. Following his discharge from the Air Force, Guthrie would become a teacher at San Diego High School, Memorial Junior High, and San Diego Mesa College, where he was one of the first black faculty members. It was also in 1968 that Guthrie, along with several other venerable black psychologists, would co-found the Association of Black Psychologists. They determined their mission to promoting and advancing the profession of African psychology, influencing and affecting social change, and developing of programs whereby psychologists of African descent, hereafter known as black psychologists, can assist in solving problems of black communities and other ethnic groups. The mission and founding of the Association of Black Psychologists was timely as it occurred in the wake of the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968. It was soon after the founding of ABP that Guthrie would officially become Dr. Guthrie after earning his doctorate in psychology in 1970 from the United States International University, currently known as Alliant International University. His career was marked by many promotions, and he would go on to have several positions, including being an associate professor of psychology at the University of Pittsburgh, 
becoming a research psychologist for the National Institute of Education in Washington, where he would study multicultural issues as the senior research psychologist. And he would then go on to become the associate director of the Psychological Sciences Division of the Office of Naval Research. In 1976, Guthrie decided to write a book to level the playing field, which became a testament to the struggle for equal education and recognition. This book would be called Even the Rat Was White, a historical view of psychology, which aimed to identify and highlight the discrimination that had been inherently present in the field of psychology since its early days. Even the Rat Was White illuminated the contributions of pioneering Black psychologists by shining a spotlight on their legacy while challenging racial stereotypes in and out of the field of psychology. Within his book, he would highlight the contributions of famous Black psychologists such as Mammy and Kenneth Clark, the husband and wife duo who were famous for their doll study that was integral to the Supreme Court decision, Brown v. Board of Education, which identified that segregation was an, in an integrational and caustic concept that had internalized in children and that separate but equal was truly unconstitutional. He would also highlight the likes of Frances C. Sumner, who was the first African-American to earn a PhD in psychology and was also a student of G. Stanley Hall. Furthermore, we would have Inez Beverly Proffer, who was often considered the first black woman to earn a PhD in psychology. She was dedicated to the educational and psychological attainment of black students. Unfortunately, she did die tragically at a young age due to a car accident when she was 37. Furthermore, we would have the likes of Herman George Kennedy, who was a social psychologist who was the first to examine the race of the examiner as a bias in IQ testing. And then we would have Ruth Winifred Howard, one of the first African-American women to earn a PhD in psychology as well, who studied child psychology and had a particular emphasis on students with special needs Now, in true historiographic fashion, Guthrie didn't simply just go to libraries and archives to dig up information about the history of Black psychology. Because truth be told, in many cases, there simply were none. Instead, Guthrie would actively call, write, and other correspondence with living contemporaries to give an opportunity for Black psychologists to tell their stories and understand their legacy through their perspective. In this clip, you'll actually hear a conversation between Robert Guthrie and Ruth Renneford Howard. And lo and behold, I just picked up the phone and called information in Chicago, just saying, well, maybe... Uh, you are now in Chicago? No, I'm here in Washington right now. Oh, I see. But I just called information in, uh, in Chicago asking whether they had a listing for A.S. Beckham. And lo and behold, I received the number. I couldn't believe it, you yes, know? Well, um, I have retained his name in the phone book. Uh, I thought there's a double listing. There's my name as well as his name. You know, uh, what I'd like to do, Dr. Beckham, is to type up a brief, by, after I read and do a little bit more checking up here, and send you a draft statement about what I'd like to say about you. I would appreciate if you would call me Dr. Ruth Howard and in parenthesis put uh, Mrs. Albert S. Beckham, if you like. I will, okay, that's I'm very proud of being Mrs. Beckham. Uh -huh. But uh, at the same time, we always differentiated professionally. You know, there's a lot of, uh, I've run into other people who've done the same thing. You know that? Okay, though, Mrs. Dr. Ruth Howard, parentheses, Mrs. A.S. Beckham. Yes. Now, perhaps unsurprisingly, despite its widespread acclaim today, many viewed Even the Rat Was White as a divisive book that was intending to split the racial lines of black and white individuals, and specifically between black and white psychologists. But his legacy would continue. Guthrie would practice with a team of five other black psychologists serving predominantly black and Mexican clients in underserved neighborhoods. Although he retired in the early 1980s, he would then come out of retirement for a tenured professorship at the Southern Illinois University, which he held until 1998. Until his death in 2005, Guthrie would continue to occasionally teach courses at San Diego State University. 
Guthrie hoped to mentor and inspire the next generation of psychologists, just like his professors had for him. Guthrie agreed that the responsibility for increasing diversity within psychology rests on the shoulders of our academic institutions. In 2001, Robert Guthrie was the first black psychologist to deposit his papers in the National Archives of American Psychology. David Baker, the director of the National Archives, was quoted as saying, we know almost nothing about the development of psychology at historically black colleges and universities, and only Bob Guthrie's work examines this in detail. African Americans have much to be proud about their struggle against adversity, like the fact that in my lifetime, they were not allowed to attend many grad schools simply because of their race. There are stories of inspiration, courage, and strength, and also of anger, frustration, and hurt. Over a career spanning nearly 50 years, Robert Guthrie would make an indelible impact on the field of psychology and its reckoning with his own history. Now in his second edition, Even the Rat Was White continues to be a poignant reflection of how far we've come as a field and through whose efforts we've gotten here, as well as a timely reminder of how much further we need to go. Through his years of research in multiculturalism, clinical efforts to improve the psychological well-being of minority communities, and a deep-seated desire to mentor the next generation of psychologists, surely Robert Guthrie's legacy is not to be understated. Indeed, the American Psychological Association's assessment was accurate when they said that he is one of the most influential and multifaceted African-American scholars of the century. Thank you for listening to my presentation on Robert V. Guthrie. I hope you learned something.